Hello and welcome back to Excelsif. This is the second part of our 100 Pro Tips for Pivot Tables. If you recall, we have already covered these tips in our previous video. I'll leave a link of part 1 on top right and in the description and also the link to our Pivot Table video in case some of you still have issues with understanding Pivot Tables. If you're excited to unlock the full potential of Pivot Tables, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest insights. Let's jump right in. Alright, let's kick off this pivot party with tip number one of this video. Ever wondered how many times a specific item appears in a field? We've got you covered with our tip number one for the day. By default, when you drag a field with numbers in the value box here, it will give you some in most cases. But did you know you can change it to count? Just click on this small arrow thingy here and go into the value field settings. Here you can choose count to show values. Also, if you drag a field with text in the value box, it will default to count. Let me show you. Let's first clear this pivot table using a tip from the last video by going into pivot table analyze tab, then actions, clear and clear all. Now let's move mode to rows and mode again to values. And here we have them as count. Moving on to trip number 12. Let's group some items. Let's say we want to keep a close eye on some of our stores in Europe. Let's select those stores here. Amsterdam, Athens, Barcelona and Berlin. I know there are more but you get the idea. Now right click and go in group. And here you have all these stores separately in a group. This is an extension. Instead of going through right click and then going to group, you can use keyboard shortcut. Let's select our cities again. Amsterdam, Athens, Barcelona and Berlin and press Alt, Shift and the right arrow key and there you go with the group. Easier than going through the right click menu, right? I know, pivot tables can be a bore most of the time. Let's add a dash of visual flair to your pivot table. We can add icons to our values here by selecting them all. And then going in conditional formatting in our home tab and going to icon sets. Here you can choose what kind of icons you want. I'm going with these arrows here. Now that we have them, they are not just eye candy. You can actually go into conditional formatting, icon sets and then go into more rules here at the bottom. And now you can choose whatever options you need. Want to navigate through your pivot table quickly but don't want to collapse all fields? You can simply double click on the field you need collapsed and you are done. You can also click on these minus or dash symbol here. But as for me, double clicking is much faster and accurate than targeting a small symbol. Just like at tip number 5 and 8 from a part 1 video, we are going to check another option in the show values as menu. This time we are bringing percentages into play to give you a better perspective on your data. Let's say we have our sales figures from all our stores and we want to know how much revenue is generated by each store compared to other stores in percentage. Let me add another January sales figures in our values box because you know as per our tip number 10 we can add multiple instances of the same fields. We are going to right click on this new field and go to show values as percentage of column total. This shows us what percentage is this store sales in respect to the total revenue. Pretty neat right? Up next this tip is a little known trick that can make a big difference in your pivot table's performance. If you are using a pivot table that is connected to a very large data source or if you are using a shared file which is updated by other individuals constantly and you need to make some changes to the layout of your pivot table, you can defer the layout update until you are done by placing a check mark here. Defer layout update. Now you can move the fields around and you won't have any changes to your pivot table unless you click on update here. Need to make your labels more descriptive? Let's say we don't like this offline and online bit and wish to change it. But we can't do that in our main data sheet. No problems, 
we can rename them here by simply selecting it and typing over it like this. Let's change online to internet and offline to brick and mortar. And as you can see, it not only changes this, but all the other instances of these two. You can change item names in a field, row headings, column headings, filter labels, totals or grand total labels. Let's say you have a large pivot table and you need to select all of it. Clicking and dragging might take longer. So you go to pivot table analyze tab and then to actions group here. Click on the drop down here where it says select and choose entire pivot table and you're done. You can do this or you can use control A to select the whole pivot table. Whatever works for you. So you have applied a lot of filters and now don't feel like going through each one of them to remove all filters. Don't worry, I got you. Go to pivot table analyze tab and then to disk group action. Choose clear and you will find an option to clear filters. Click on it and you are done. There you have it. 10 more pivot pro tips that are sure to elevate your data analysis game. Remember, practice makes perfect. So don't hesitate to try out these tips on your own pivot tables. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with fellow data enthusiasts. And don't forget to let us know in the comments which tip you are most excited to try out. Thanks for tuning in to Excelsive and until next time, happy spreadsheeting.